Hello and welcome to a brand new series of game development tutorials on how to make your own scary survival horror game in Unity. This video tutorial series will take you through everything you need to know and I'll even provide you with all the scripts and assets that you need along the way. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload and feel free to leave a comment or drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel and you'll also find all the assets to this series there too along with plenty of other things and you can also join as a free member now. The game we'll be building will be loosely based on a game I made a few years ago and I'll leave a link in the pinned comment if you want to have a go and play it for free. So the aim of this is to make a fully functional scary survival horror game for free just by following along with me in every single video. So who is this tutorial series aimed at? Well it's going to be aimed at newcomers to game development as well as intermediate developers. I will take you from a beginner level to well let's say an intermediate level by the end of this series. Even if you're a veteran at making games, stick around just to see how we tackle things and the methods we use to achieve the desired effect. So this first tutorial, we're going to explore how to get Unity on your PC, we'll explore the hub, and we'll get acquainted with the engine interface, and we'll start inserting objects into our game. So Unity, where can you get it? Simple, unity.com, go to downloads and download the hub. It really is that simple. So what is the hub exactly? Well, the hub is an interface that you can use to store all of your projects. You can see I'm on a brand new PC here. I only have these two builds at the moment. I've only had this PC for a couple of months. Um, but essentially, this is where all your projects are stored. You can find your installs here. Now, this is an important part here because you need to make sure that you have at least one installation of Unity on your PC. So you just need to install the editor and select whatever is the latest stable version to use. For me currently, it's 2022.3. Now it's worth pointing out that I'm recording this in early 2024. And as of right now, Unity 6 will be coming out pretty soon this year, uh, but I'm not using it just yet. We may upgrade this project uh, if the time comes, but we'll see. So just make sure you have the editor installed. So how do you create a new game? Well, if you go to new project up here, you'll have a couple of different options. The one we're going to be building in for this series is going to be the built-in render pipeline. There are other pipelines that you can use, like the high definition one, but that's something for another tutorial. So here you just need to set the name of your game. So I've set mine as Scary Survival Horror. Select the location wherever you want to save it. And here where it says organization all you need to do is click the drop down menu and select your account so make sure you are logged in to all of this you can also look up via unity cloud it's entirely up to you whether you want to or not and the same applies for the version control so once that's done it'll take a couple of minutes to build up your project but you'll be presented with this screen that you saw a couple of minutes ago at the start of this tutorial so what is all of this this is the standard layout of Unity and pretty much any engine that you would use. So let's go through a couple of things on here to get ourselves acquainted with what these things are. Because things have changed in Unity over the years, so things may look a little different, they may have moved, and they may not exist at all. So this bit here is the hierarchy. So this panel stores all of your game objects within the whatever scene you're in, in text format. So you can see currently by default, we have a sample scene, has a main camera and a directional light. There's plenty of other things that we can use in the hierarchy, but for all intents and purposes, it is good as it's gonna get right now. So as we click these, you'll notice things do change in other panels around Unity. This here is the scene view. Now the scene view is where we can build our game itself. So any objects, assets, whatever we import into Unity, we can visually see and manipulate within this scene view right here. So you can call this the development view if you want to. This section here is the inspector panel. Now the inspector panel is where you store all the information about a game object. So you can see at the moment we have our main camera selected. And you can see here that we have some different information about that main camera. These are all called components. By default, almost every game object will have 
probably at least one or two components. Um, the first one is always going to be a transform. So the reason everything always has a transform is because this defines where the object is, how big it is, and which way it's facing, essentially. So like I say, with the camera, you've got a camera component. If we move to our directional light, you'll find a light component. Duh. So if you add any other objects to it, let's say uh, a character model that has a texture on it and a material, you'll have more components over here. So think of the inspector panel as a way of really digging deep into whatever object you currently have selected. Next to the scene view, we have a game view. It's not very interesting right now, but this is where we play the game that we have built. So you can play it at any point. We could even play it now if we want to, but not a whole lot would actually happen. So speaking of play, you'll see these buttons up here. If we press play, you can see it will compile whatever is built and it will put it into this game view. So if we had a character, we'd be able to move that character around quite easily. Pressing the button again stops and we head back into the scene view. So it's worth noting that by default, if you make any changes whilst you're in the gameplay mode in the scene view, you won't save the changes. So what else do we have? Well, down here we have the project panel. Now the project panel is where you store all of your assets. So whether it be textures, materials, scripts, audio, it's all stored down here. You'll have different folders and easy, you can create new ones just like you would in Windows or Mac. Next to it, we have the console view. If you have errors in your game, it will be displayed here. If you have warnings in your game, it will be displayed here. If you want to print things from a script, it will be displayed here. It's not very interesting right now, but it will become very useful later on in development. And finally, I have an animation tab here. You may not have it. So let me talk about what this animation tab is and then how you can get it if you don't already have it. So the animation tab is where we can create an animation for any object within the scene. So for example, if we were to try and create an animation on this directional light and just spin it around, we'd do it down here in this panel. I tend to keep my view pretty standard like this, and I usually have it selected on project window. That doesn't mean to say you can't, because you can move these around. You can change the size, make them bigger, smaller, and you can also uncouple the tabs and make them freely movable. You can change their size and you can put them somewhere else if you want to, like so. So I'm going to bring my game tab back to here, set scene. So this animation tab, what if you don't have that? Well, if you click the three little dots here, you'll be able to go down to add tab, and then you can see a couple of different tabs that you can select, click on animation, and it will present you with this tab. So we've explored the main windows that we would use within Unity. What else is there that is kind of vital at this point before we start building? Well, if we go to file, and then if we go down to build settings, you can see this window here tells us what we can build for. Now, anything you build in Unity, can be ported to any supported platform, any of these. You just have to make sure that you have the installation already set for whatever you want to build to. So for example, if you want to build something for PS4 or PS5, you need to make sure that you do have that module installed and you do need a license for that. So at this present moment, we're going to build this scary survival horror just for Windows. So what that means is that we've already got this selected, as dictated by the little Unity icon there. But if you wanted to change to Android, you would just need to click on that and switch platform. You can switch platform at any point during your project. It is entirely up to you, but keep in mind the larger your project, the longer it will take to convert whatever platform you are on. So now we have everything in place. There's plenty of other options to explore in Unity, but as I said earlier, we'll come to those as we need them. There's no point going deep into a lot of the menus, a lot of the information at this point. We have all the basics in place now, and that's the important thing. So what can we do? Well, let's add a game object just to start things off. So if we go to game object at the top, go to 3D object, and for anyone that's followed me over the last 10 years, you'll know I love cubes. 
Cubes are a fundamental part of game development, not just in Unity, but many other engines as well. So let's talk about a cube. It's strange to say that, but it's actually very, very important and very, very useful. So when you add an object to the scene, you will be given the option to rename it over here. And I'm actually going to call this, we'll just call it ground for now. Because we'll eventually make this cube our ground for the fur for our player to walk on, basically. Because if we don't, it'll fall and fall endlessly. So, what can we do to this cube to make it more ground like? Well, we can head over to the inspector panel and we can change the scale. So, the scale means how big it is. And you'll notice here that we have the three arrows the X, Y, and Z, or Z, depending on where you are in the world. So what you can do is you can manually change the size here. So we can change it to 10 on the X and let's do 10 on the Z. Uh, changes it here, not a problem, but here's another trick. You can hover your mouse over the letter and you can scale it by holding down your left mouse button and moving like so. So let's set this to 20. Looks good. But let's set the Z to Let's set to 50. Now, this has gone beyond where we can see in our scene. So hover the mouse over the scene and scroll your mouse wheel backwards and you'll zoom out. Hold the mouse wheel in and you can pan around. And if you hold the right mouse button, you can pivot on whatever position you're in right now. If you double click on the object, it will also put it into full perspective so you can see it. You can rotate an object if you want to, if you hover your mouse over and you'll see it rotate. And things like this become very useful when we get round to animation. I'm sure you can see right now how this would be useful for just simple animation on any game object. Let's set that back to zero. So the other components that we have here, we have a cube component and a mesh renderer component. That's why it's currently not very interesting because it is just a cube. There's nothing much to it, but let's make it two cubes. Let's make two grounds. If you hold control and press D on the ground, you will duplicate it. And if you hold control and pull on the arrows, you'll move this into position. So you'll see the position over here. You'll notice that it doesn't change in small numbers when I hold down the control it'll go in increments of 0.25. That's called snap settings. And we'll go into snap settings a little bit more at some point. But by default, your snap settings may not be 0.25. They may be one or they may be 0.5. But the thing I'm trying to illustrate here is you can move objects just by moving the arrows like so. Hold control, press Z to undo. Now, I know this is only a very quick and brief tutorial, but if you are new, you have indeed just learned the absolute basics to Unity and to game development in general. So from next tutorial, that's where things will actually really start coming together, believe it or not, because next time we're going to cover importing assets into Unity, we'll cover textures, and we'll also cover materials. And we'll explore some of the settings a little bit more. So just remember to click the subscribe button and the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial that I upload in this series. See you next time.